Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria on the west southern coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having a great week so far and welcome to another week of live IELTS classes. Hi Rachma, welcome Nancy, hi Refla, Kaur, Preeti, good to see our members in the class. Supreme Dalakoti, good luck on your speaking test tomorrow. Remember, just focus, be professional, keep, keep it clean. Keep it clean. That's in regard to your second comment. Welcome, Jainil. All right, everyone, this is IELTS speaking part one today. I'm going to tell you about band nine strategy. I have a pretty good idea about it. I did sit the official IELTS exam incognito about a month ago. That means they didn't actually know I was Canadian. I used my EU passport um, and I did get nine on the speaking, so that was good. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there's definitely a good strategy there for communication that you can use to get those high, high band scores. All right, good morning, Catherine. So everyone, uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. And for the general IELTS, visit us at G-I-E-L-T-S-Help.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. Uh, this is a speaking class, so uh, be sure to uh, speak and repeat. Copy my intonation, my pronunciation, my choice of words uh, throughout the lesson. When you hear new vocabulary, uh, remember to write it down. Um, I'll quickly show you our websites. You can uh, practice um, your speaking for free there. So this is our academic IELTS website here uh, with the blue background. And you can click either of these big red buttons uh, to join our premium package. And if you would like to join our general IELTS, uh, then uh, this is it right here with the green background. And again, you can click that big red button to join the premium package. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access, and it's fractional compared to the cost of the exam. So it's definitely worth it. Yagendra, thank you for that shout out. I appreciate it. Um, all right, everyone. And when you are logged in, you can create an account for free as well. You can try it out. You can get a My Student account. And this sounds like I'm just pitching you an advertisement, but I, in fact, I'm going to help you here very quickly. Um, so when you log into your My Student account, you can do this in your free account as well. Uh, you will see a button that says, uh, student partner speaking and that's absolutely free it's like Skype or WhatsApp so you can video chat with other students but of course everybody that's in here um, is uh, an IELTS student so right now we have uh, Namrata in here waiting for somebody to audio uh, or video chat with her there's always somebody hanging out in here waiting for someone else to uh, join in and uh, chat with them okay uh, Kian, uh, advertisement or advertisement, up to you. Um, both are okay. <laughs> Victor, thanks again for that. Um, all right, everyone, so that's, uh, that's free for you. I'm going to get out of here because I think Nam uh, Namrata is going to ping me if I don't close this. So I'm just going to close that up. But if somebody wants to chat with Namrata, log into your account, and there, uh, there they will be. Um, all right, everyone, so uh, today is speaking. Um, we have apps, of course. You can use our apps, Academic IELTS Help app or General IELTS Help app in your Apple or uh, Google Play Store. And on Instagram, everyone, I, I, sometimes I forget to say this, but on Instagram, uh, we, ha we do have Instagram um, profiles, uh, IELTS underscore A help for academic and G IELTS help for general. Uh, and we have lots going on nowadays on our Instagram as well. Lots of free questions, multiple choice strategies with questions and answers. Uh, so check those out too. Okay, cool. Uh, if anybody wants to um, get a hold of me or you have any questions, uh, that's my email, adrian at aehelp.com. You can uh, always send me an email and I will happily get back to you. Uh, and of course, we have live streaming from today until Saturday. Uh, we have speaking today. We'll have reading, writing, and more kinds of lessons coming up in the week. 
um, members, we will have a question and answer session for our channel members coming up as well. So be sure that you're here for that. All right. So uh, let's get to this speaking um, interview. Okay, everyone. So uh, when you are uh, getting ready for your speaking exam, uh, show up to your exam like one hour early. So plan to be there one hour early. Uh, that way you can kind of get ready, go use the bathroom, become a bit familiar with the exam center. You have to be there at least 20 minutes before to register for the exam. So get there 40 minutes before your registration, okay? That's my first tip, and I said that last week too, and I'm gonna say it again because it's a really important uh, tip. And this can actually help you get like one more band. So uh, get an extra band. Uh, in your speaking, uh, show up to your exam, uh, speaking exam, of course. Um, but your sit-down exam, too. I would show up there early as well. So speaking exam, uh, at least one hour earlier than your appointed time, okay? Uh, you need uh, 20 minutes right before to register, okay? Uh, so what I'm telling you here is use the 40 minutes uh, before registration to speak uh, in English to other candidates uh, who are there, okay? Um, so take some speaking questions with you and uh, find some other candidates and just sit down and practice with them. That really helps your confidence and it will help you uh, to be more fluent and just to do better overall in your speaking interview. Um, everybody good on that? Good morning, Rahul. So everybody got that clearly? I repeat that just about every speaking lesson because it's basically the easiest way to make sure that you get a good band score. Show up one hour before your speaking interview. Do, do not be shy. Uh, speak to other candidates who are there in English. Uh, practice with a, a Q&A uh, piece of paper. So take a speaking script uh, with you, some questions. Um, I do have lots of students that did this in the past and they often write an email to me saying, yeah, that really, really helped and really uh, improved my uh, confidence and ability, okay? So uh, just give me a thumbs up, some of you. It's, it's good if I can feel that, um, uh, that you're <laughs> picking up what I'm putting down uh, as what I'm saying, okay? Uh, Kian, it's not impossible, but it's definitely challenging to go from a five to an eight in six months. All right, so you show up early, you practice some questions, uh, and then uh, you go in 20 minutes before your time, you register, and uh, then the examiner calls you in. By this time, you're feeling really confident, and you're feeling great, okay? All right, there we have some thumbs up, fantastic. And the examiner um, meets and greets you. They say, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. Um, and the first question they will ask you <clears throat> is, may I see your identification? Or they will say, please show me your identification. They don't want to touch it these days because of COVID. Okay, so may I see your identification? Uh, please show me your identification. So even though you register before and you show them your passport or your ID, uh, you have to show it again to the examiner. Uh, in most cases, they, they should ask you. Okay, it's their protocol. Um, so give me a nice full sentence answer uh, for this one. Uh, Supreme, uh, Dalakati, they might ask for your um, ID, even if it's a video call, they might ask you to hold it up and show them. Uh, so do have it ready, okay? Ebby, you're super welcome, Ebby Jacob. All right, Moria says, sure, here is my ID that I use for registration, please uh, have a look. Yeah, and then you show it to them, Moria, absolutely. 
Uh, Catherine says, my given names are Kenneth Anderson and my last name is Nassar. Please call me Ken for short. Uh, Catherine, that works for the next question. Uh, just random video says, here you go, sir. Um, just random videos, you're not actually giving them the passport. So uh, instead of saying, here you go, sir, say, yes, here it is. Uh, please take a look. Okay, because they're not going to actually touch it. So you're not really passing it to them. Okay. Uh, Cigar says, absolutely. Here it is. Please have a look. Kaldeep says, yes, sure. Here's my passport, which I use for registration. Please have a look. Nice. Uh, fluency, yeah, so you want to be really fluent here, so yes, certainly. Here is my passport that I used to register um, for this exam a few weeks ago. Uh, please uh, take a look. Okay, and then they'll look at it, all right? Uh, and then they do uh, a little bit of administrative um, preamble. So they're going to say, okay, uh, this is Jainil uh, Gabani um, sitting the exam in uh, New Delhi at uh, 1400 hours. Candidate number is 73542. I'm recording this exam for administrative and marking purposes. And now we shall begin. And then um, while they're doing that, okay, so it's not a lot of time. It's only maybe like 10 seconds, all right? Um, but even in that 10 seconds, um, you should remind yourself of a couple of important points. And this is kind of a new and fun strategy that I haven't mentioned before, okay? So uh, here's my second tip of the day for you to boost your confidence in your band score, okay? So tip, uh, during the 10-second uh, uh, preamble where the examiner gives the location, time, uh, candidate number, you should take a deep breath. and exhale slowly while remembering that you are a beautiful person. You deserve to be there. The sun will shine tomorrow and you need to give Full answers, uh, let me do this a little bit differently. You need to A, give full answers by using the question. B, answer, explain, and smooth example. And C, use quantitative uh, language for clarity, okay? So there are lots of steps um, that you can take, but definitely these are a few of the most important starters, okay? Um, so uh, just like what I did now when I was saying, okay, uh, this is Janiel Gabani um, sitting the exam in New Delhi at uh, 12 o'clock, uh, candidate number 735432. I'm recording this exam. So it's about a 10, 15, 10, 15 second kind of um, sp speech. So just kind of while that's going on, don't stare into space and be like, oh, the world is going to collapse and the ceiling is coming down on my head. So instead of that, um, go the other direction and um, boost your confidence. So in, out, yeah, I deserve to be here. I paid good money for this. The examiner's another person. Someone came before me. Someone's going to come after me. I'm going to leave this room in about 15 minutes. The sun's going to keep shining. I'm just going to do my best. All right, everybody good on that? So everybody got that tip? Again, just give me some thumbs up. I always really want to know that you're 100% uh, with me, attentively, actively um, a part of what I'm saying. So Janiel says, yeah, okay. So just keep that in mind and, and keep your shoulders loose. Keep yourself relaxed, okay? 
All right. And then, of course, remember your strategies. That's a good way to distract yourself from any kind of anxiety or nervousness. There's a good number of thumbs up. Kuldeep, Rita, Adesina, Manvi, nice. Mr. Bite, great. Um, so focusing on strategy is a good way to distract yourself, okay? Thumbs up. Yeah, very good. All right. Um, <clears throat> so give full answers using the question. Answer, explain, smooth example. Use quantitative language uh, for clarity. Okay. All right. And we're going to do that today. We're going to practice these strategies. Okay. So again, repeat after me. May I see your identification? Yes, certainly. Here's my passport that I used to register for this exam a few weeks ago. Please take a look. Fantastic. Next question uh, they'll say is okay. You can put your passport away. Um, what is your full name? So now they will ask for your full name. What is your full name? And again, um, use the question. So use these warm-ups to remind you, my full name is, okay? Or my given name is, my surname is. So start with a nice fluent response, okay? All right, Rafia says, my full name is Rafia Kosar. Uh, please call me Rafia. Very good, that works. Uh, Janiel says, my given names are Janiel, Jayanti Bahi, and my surname is Gabani. Please just call me J for short. Very nice, Janiel. Yeah, your middle name. Whoa, that's a, that's a difficult one to pronounce, Janiel. It's beautiful and tough to pronounce. All right, uh, Sagar says, I'm Sagar Bujel. Please call me Sagar. Good. Akshay says, my full names Akshay Kumar, but please call me by my given name, Akshay. Uh, and, and, instead of but, Akshay, and. My full name's Akshay Kumar, uh, and please call me by my given name, Akshay. Okay. Zima says, my full name is Emerson Ozioma uh, Promise. Just call me Zima. Okay. Very nice. Zima. Zima is short for Ozioma, so you can say, please call me Zima for short. All right. Okay, uh, sure. So uh, my full name is um, Peter uh, Davis Andrews. Please just call me uh, Pete for short. All right. So nice and fluent, repeat after me. What is your full name? My full name is Peter Davis Andrews. Uh, please just call me Pete for short. Okay, Pete, uh, the speaking has three parts. I'm going to give you instructions for each. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Please introduce yourself in a few words, okay? So lots of different ways to go about this. Um, please introduce yourself in a few words. Uh, in this case, I think most people would include information about maybe uh, what they do for work or study, uh, where they live, uh, perhaps give their age, um, usually for men, not so much for women. Um, so just some demographic data about yourself. Don't go overboard, okay? So uh, please introduce yourself in um, a few words. Of course, marital status might be included there, single, married, kids, no kids, okay? Um, so put it together. Um, sometimes they'll ask you very directly, do you work or study? Sometimes they'll ask you a little bit more openly. Just introduce yourself in a few words, okay? So give me an introduction. Again, remember, answer, explain, example. You can start using that here, okay? Esteban says, I have to get used to the British accent. Yes, um, however, Esteban, you can hear various accents on your IELTS exam. You could hear a Canadian accent like mine, American accent, Australian, New Zealand. So, and even in Great Britain, there are lots of different accents. So be ready for multiple accents, uh, even from your speaking examiner, okay? Uh, Kuldeep says, I am born and raised in a small village of Moga. I have four members in my family. I recently completed my graduation in November 2020. Kuldeep, uh, very, very good. Um, one uh, point about your last sentence. Uh, if you completed your high school graduation, I would add that. Um, or if you completed university, then definitely 
uh, do tell which university and what major. Okay. Um, otherwise, I like it. Born and raised, family status, and then what you're recently doing. Okay. Very good. Yeah. All right. So some more of those. Okay. Uh, fluency is important here. Students don't overthink it. You won't have three minutes to answer the examiner. So just like you're speaking, okay, type just like you're speaking. This isn't a writing class. You don't have time to rethink. I will correct your response in real time. So don't worry about making mistakes. Uh, focus more on being fluent. Fluency is one of the most important parts of speaking to practice for many students. So be fluent, okay? Rafia says, I am currently a student. Um, after three months, I want to continue my education in Germany uh, for my master's. That's why I need this IELTS exam. Okay, Rafia, that's great. A um, little bit more detail. What kind of master's? What's your major? What are you doing? Okay. Otherwise, it's quite good. All right. Um, Rahul, don't worry too much about pronunciation. That's not so important. Okay. And you can look that up on British Council's website. They'll tell you the same. Pronunciation is not all that important. Okay. Umida says, I'm a student at school and this is my final year. Um, after I graduate, I plan to pursue my post-secondary education at Harvard. Uh, it's my dream to become a great lawyer. Okay, Umida, a little bit more to it, right? Manvi says, I'm an introverted type of person from a nu small nuclear family. Um, recently, I celebrated my 18th birthday in March. Uh, and I am a science a student. Okay, very good, Monby. A couple of corrections there in your word order. Um, I'm an introvert, okay, is already the type of person, so you don't have to say type of person. Honey says, I am born in Bangalore, capital of Karnataka. My profession is a chartered accountant, and I want to pursue my uh, CPA in Canada. Very good, honey, and I'm sure you're going to get there because you're very studious. You're often in these classes, and I can see you improving your uh, language and communication skills day in and day out, so keep it up, and I'm sure you'll get there. Um, Preeti says... I am born and raised in the beautiful lake city of Udaipur, which is located in the western Indian state of Rajasthan. I have been working as a lecturer uh, in Gitanjali College of Nursing since 2016. I teach gynecology nursing. Very interesting. Um, good. Yeah, Preeti, that's very professional and uh, nice introduction. All right, so that's what you do here, okay? Um, so I grew up on the beautiful west coast of uh, Canada um, in the capital of uh, British Columbia, uh, Victoria. I come from a family of five with one older and one younger uh, brother. I'm uh, currently uh, married and have a lovely daughter. I've been uh, teaching English for over 20 years and I love to travel. All right. Maybe a little bit about your hobby, right? Um, so here's my introduction. You can repeat me if you'd like. Uh, it's important to be fluent, so practice. Uh, please introduce yourself in a few words. I grew up on the beautiful west coast of Canada in the capital of British Columbia, Victoria. I come from a family of five with one older and one younger brother. I'm currently married and have a lovely daughter. I've uh, been teaching English for over 20 years and I love to travel. Notice how I snuck um, a present uh, perfect progressive in there as well. So uh, if uh, at all possible, definitely show your grammar range and accuracy right away uh, in the beginning, okay? And uh, the next question 
for warming up. It's a very common one. And what do you like to do in your free time? So um, they're kind of getting you to feel comfortable here. So it's basically asking you about your hobbies. Don't just repeat what you said um, before for the previous question, but give new information. Always really work hard to give new information. Uh, that's um, my next tip, okay? This is my tip three. Um, give new information with each answer and connect uh, to your previous answers. I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, it's a little bit um, tricky, uh, but uh, practice makes perfect. And you want to practice this. This will help you to bump up your band score for sure because it, you will sound more natural and you will sound like you're actually having a conversation, okay? Uh, you do not want to sound disjointed in your speaking interview. Disjointed means that as if you're speaking in pieces. Um, so instead, you want to sound like you're speaking in a conversation fluently, okay? Uh, so I'll show you how to do that, but that's very important to give new information with each answer and connect to your previous answers, okay? So... Um, what do you like to do in your free time? Uh, Vicky says it depends on the weather mostly. Vicky, that's a good start. You want to keep going with that, okay? Ebby says this feels like a family gathering, and Adrian's the kind of guy who can make anyone comfortable. Eh, maybe, Ebby. Um, all right. Uh, let's see some more answers here. Um, Cigar says, when I get a little bit of downtime, I love to play online games. Just yesterday, I played PUBG for an hour, and it was just a great way to unwind and connect with some of my friends online. Uh, Cigar, good. I like your smooth example. Finish it with a little bit more information. Coldeep says, well, I am a man of parts. I tend to do certain activities in my spare time. I try to cook new dishes by learning them from the internet. In addition, I play the piano to relax, um, and um, sometimes in the evenings. Okay, uh, not relax my mind. That's kind of odd. Remember what I said, Kuldeep, in the last class? I believe you were there um, when I said that you have to be careful with how do you use the word relax. Relax is something that you do. You don't really relax your mind. It's a bit awkward to say that, okay? Rahul says, I have an interest in cricket. Um, so I both play it and watch it on TV. Um, it helps me to socialize with others and, um, get a good workout. Okay. Rahul, a little bit more content, a little bit more vocabulary with the cricket. Okay. Notice how I used both and I both watch it on TV and I play it in my spare time. Okay. All right, Kevin says, apart from my eagerness to get around, as I just said, I also love to binge watch YouTube during my spare time, especially watching funny content as it gives me good laughs and the opportunity to bond with my family. Okay, very good, Kevin. Uh, I like the connection. That's what I mean about new content with connection. Uh, and that's what you want to do. Okay, so and what do you like to do in your free time? Well, in my uh, spare time, if I'm not uh, teaching a lesson or uh, hanging out with my family, I like uh, to read a good book like uh, Mystic river uh mystery novel um or surf the internet for collectibles as i'm into collecting stamps coins and comics 
All right. Um, so this is where I'm connecting. So I just mentioned, because of course this is a flow. So here I'm reverting back to what uh, you're uh, telling me in the chat. However, in the actual exam, of course, this is happening smoothly. So the examiner is asking me, uh, please introduce yourself in a few words. I give the answer. I grew up on the beautiful west coast of Canada in the capital of British Columbia, Victoria. I come from a family of five with one older and one younger brother. I'm currently married and have a lovely daughter. I've been teaching English for over 20 years and I love to travel. Uh, and what do you like to do in your free time? Well, in my spare time, if I'm not teaching a lesson or hanging out with my family, that's my connection, okay? So I'm using the question and I'm making a connection to what I previously said. And then I say, I like to read a good book like Mystic River, a mystery novel, uh, or surf the internet for collectibles as I'm into collecting stamps, coins, and comics, okay? So connection and then smooth answers, explanations, examples, that is how you get those high band scores, okay? And that's a really good strategy for fluency. So making that connection between or among your responses. And then of course, uh, also using the question and your answer. That will give you a lot of fluency. Is everybody clear on that? Can I get some thumbs up on that? So use the question, connect your answer. Using the question, connecting the answer will help your fluency score and it will also help your coherence score. It's much more coherent, your responses when you do that. And those are the key elements to getting the high band scores. That's where most students lose their band scores is lack of fluency, lack of coherence. So that's how you can kind of navigate around that, okay? Honey says, yes, got it. Eastern Jaggery, Mr. Bite, Akash. Good, very good. All right. So now the examiner will introduce um, a to the topic of part one. That can be a lot of different uh, ideas. For me, when I took my exam, it was uh, maths. Uh, so let's talk about maths, doing math. Um, okay, I was never a big fan of math, so it was an interesting topic to talk about, but nonetheless. Um, okay, uh, so part one, uh, let's talk about uh, competition. Let's talk about competition. All right, let's do that. Um, do you like to compete with others? Okay, um, yes or no? Don't say it depends, okay? If you do like to compete with others in certain contexts, then say, yes, I do, okay? Um, it depends. Answers are sometimes okay, but in many situations, they will get you into a difficult explanation. So I usually recommend to avoid the it depends. And also the it depends answers for your listener. For me, if I'm your examiner, I'm kind of like, oh, really? A yes and no answer. Um, just give me a yes or a no. Okay, so uh, do you like to compete with others? Yes, and then explain yourself, okay? Uh, Gung sir, yeah, of course it's good to use phrasal verbs in speaking and writing. They're natural, they're common, uh, they're used in uh, formal, informal contexts, so definitely use phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are considered idiomatic language, and you will get points for those, yeah, okay? So answering a yes, I do is not enough. Manmi says, yes, I do, USA. Um, okay. Uh, you might get a smile, but uh, your band score <laughs> needs a bit more than that. Shintiki Atta says, well, I love to compete with others and then keep going. Okay. Uh, Umida says, definitely, yes, I like to compete with my um, friends. I don't know what you mean about equal friends. So I like to compete with my friends who are equally as good in certain activities like basketball. Umida, you have to explain that more. Equal friends is kind of like, eh, it's weird. I get what you're saying, but you need to express it clear. Akshay says, well, I guess when it's playing a game like chess, I think I do compete with others. Keep going, Akshay, that's a good start. Ebby says, yes, I like competition as far as it's healthy. I believe it boosts performance and productivity in the participants. Okay, Ebby, this part one, it's about you. So you have to talk about me. 
Okay, that's very important, students. That's one of the common mistakes, Ebby, is people generalize their answers. Don't generalize your answers. Talk about yourself. It's do you like to compete with others? Kuldeep says, yes, certainly. I try to compete with others when I'm challenged or I have a score. Um, let's see what else you had there. A score to settle. That's an idiom. Uh, Kuldeep says, yes, certainly. I try to compete with others when I'm challenged or I have to score more marks, especially in maths. Okay, so you're a math buff. Uh, Vicky says, yeah, of course. It helps me to enhance creativity and imagination. Um, I hear about a project or another challenge um, and I get perspective from the competition. Okay, Vicky, you have to rethink the end of what you're saying there. It seems to be going off topic, so I made some uh, corrections. All right. Uh, my answer to this, uh, can anybody guess what my answer would be based on, <laughs> based on my previous answers, uh, just for fun, because, uh, what I didn't tell you in my introduction is that, uh, my degree is in psychology, specifically in developmental psychology. From a psychology perspective, um, what do you think my answer will be to the question of uh, do you like to compete with others? Anybody guess? Well, maybe you will. Maybe you won't um, from my previous answers. Uh, but here it is. Yes. I'm extremely competitive by nature, as you may guess from mentioning that I am a middle uh, child with two brothers. I have been in competition all my life, whether in sports or lexical knowledge. I'm always up for a good challenge. Just yesterday, I played a game of three on uh, three basketball in the park. Near my home. Okay, so there um, are some examples of uh, what you need to do for your band nine, okay? So, uh, do you like to compete with others? Yes, I'm extremely competitive by nature. So here, I'm using the question, and notice one interesting trick here. I'm using the keyword compete in a different word form. So instead of saying compete, like yes, I like to compete, I'm, use, I'm using a different word form, competitive. And that's another way to boost your uh, lexical resource uh, mark and also to create more fluency. So yes, I'm extremely competitive by nature. Now, competitive by nature is a natural expression as well, okay? So make sure you're repeating all of this after me. So yes, I'm extremely competitive by nature, as you may guess from mentioning that I'm a middle child with two brothers. I have been in competition all my life, whether in sports or lexical knowledge. I'm always up for a good challenge. Just yesterday, I played a game of three-on-three -three basketball in the park near my home, okay? Uh, notice how I avoid saying, for example. So I don't say for instance or for example. I just say, uh, just yesterday. Or even without the word just, I can say yesterday, I played a game of three-on-three -three basketball in the park near my home, okay? That's the smooth flowing example. So when you give examples, uh, make sure your example is um, just uh, directly related to your answer and you will get more points for it, okay? All right. All right, here we go. Um, next question, how often do you participate in a contest? Okay, 
How often do you participate in a contest? Uh, give me a nice full response to this one. How often do you participate in a contest? While you do that, I'll read some more of the answers for the previous. Uh, Zima says, yes, I love to compete with others because it helps me grow in some aspects. I believe competition is another room to learn and develop uh, effectively. Nico says, yes, definitely. I always compete in musical uh, stages with my classmates just back in 2018. Um, October 1st, I was the winner of a musical competition in my university. It was incredible. Uh, very nice, Nico. Congratulations. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's the truth because you don't have to tell the truth on the outs. Um, but if it is, fantastic. Good for you. Uh, Kevin says, I frequently enroll uh, in non-academic contests like uh, singing contests out of recreation. I'd say a few times per year, but I only participate in academic competitions once in a blue moon, every two years maybe, because I'm often put off uh, being up against other aggressive and hostile candidates. Okay, uh, put off by being up against, Kevin. So very close, okay? I'm often put off by being up against other aggressive uh, candidates. You don't need to say hostile because it's just kind of a repetition of aggressive, more or less, okay? All right. Um, Ebby says, as I mentioned earlier, a competitive environment always enhances my performance. I love to do it in the soccer field week in and week out. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Nice expression, Ebby. Week in and week out. Yeah. Uh, very good. Sean says, most of the time I would say uh, I love it. I'm an aggressive and competitive person and enjoy the process. Uh, last week I played poker with my cousins and I won uh, a handful of cash and enjoyed the company. Okay. Yeah, Sean, throw in what you won. I won my cousin's car <laughs> and enjoyed the company. Okay. All right. Sunil says, I like to watch movies and listen to music. How, whenever I have spare time. And in addition, I'm fond of reading storybooks. Um, I don't know how that answers that question, but how often do you participate in a contest? Okay. Um, when you hear the word how often, uh, give the adverb of frequency, like always, uh, often, usually, sometimes, never, rarely, uh, seldom. And also give quantitative language. Remember, that was one of my big tips in the beginning is use numbers, right? So um, as I had mentioned... I am constantly finding myself in some type of challenge. I would say that I partake in healthy competition at least once a day, whether it is shooting hoops like yesterday or just kicking back on my couch and playing a multiplayer strategy game on my phone like uh, hearth stone. Okay. There we go. Um, so again, making connections uh, and uh, using quantitative language, okay? So quantitative language can be numbers like once, twice, three times. It can also be um, some other unit of measure like hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, Okay, so uh, something that's clearly identifiable and is understood as the same by everyone, all right? Um, so here we go. How often do you participate in a contest? As I had mentioned, past perfect uh, right there, okay, in a very simple way, but still past perfect, and you're getting points for that. 
So as I had mentioned, I'm constantly finding myself in some type of challenge. I would say that I partake in healthy competition at least once a day, whether it is shooting hoops like yesterday or just kicking back on my couch and playing a multiplayer strategy game on my phone like Hearthstone. Okay, I'm always competing. I should finish that. Okay. I'm competing once or twice a day for sure. For sure. Okay. Um, here we go. Next question. What are your favorite kinds of competitions to watch? Okay. Uh, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So what are your favorite kinds of competitions uh, to watch? So this is something that you're watching on uh, TV or perhaps you're watching it real life. Of course, these days with COVID, we don't have a lot of uh, live sport audiences, but um, you can answer nonetheless. Okay. All right, Chabi says, I enjoy watching a variety of competitions like soccer and Formula One from the comfort of my house, but I definitely love to be physically present in a chess game as I love the vibe of the challenge. Okay, uh, very good. Yeah, <laughs> live chess. Okay, Chabi. Uh, Eddie says, I'm a soccer fan and, a Lionel Messi, and Lionel Messi is my idol. Since 2008, watching FC Barcelona games are my favorite contest. Uh, and a great way to kick back on the weekend. Very good, Abby. Nice answer. You need a little bit more clarity in your grammar, but you've got a great original idea there. So good. Gungster says, my favorite kind of competition to watch are football matches, especially I adore watching Champions League uh, football. Okay, Gungster. Um, yeah. Uh, remember to use the verb of the question to watch, right? Don't forget that key verb. All right. Ravi Darji says, well, I love to watch music and dance competitions because I love to sing songs and dance. I usually watch reality shows like Indian Idol and India's Best Dancer on the Sony Entertainment Channel. Awesome, Ravi. Great answer. Okay. Mukes says, as I'm into gaming, I watch table tennis regularly on TV or YouTube and try to learn something new, which I don't yet no okay i'm not sure what you mean by i'm into gaming at the beginning okay roof patel says there are many competitions which i would like to watch but one of my favorites is to watch cricket games like these days indian premier league which i like the most uh Dhruv, that doesn't sound original it sounds like you're giving me a little bit of a template start there are many competitions which i would like to watch mm. I don't want to hear that. Um, every student can say that sentence to begin. Uh, so don't, don't use cookie cutter sentences. Okay. That's not good. All right. Wow. Lots of opinions on this. Um, Rajveer, good to see you in the class. Rajveer says my number one competition to watch are sports, especially a cricket match. I find myself biting my nails when a cricket match, um, becomes very interesting and intense these days i'm following the ipl cricket matches to satisfy my uh desires okay very good rajveer so into cricket all right i am an avid uh tennis player also so i love to watch the um big tennis matches like um wimbledon and the u.s uh, open uh, it is extremely exciting especially when there are two world class players uh, facing off against each other i would certainly jump at the opportunity to be at a 
a live game in the future. Okay. So I'm going with tennis this time. Um, here we go. Repeat after me. What are your favorite kinds of competition to watch? I'm an avid tennis player also, so I love to watch the big tennis matches like Wimbledon and the U.S. Open. It is extremely exciting, especially when there are two world-class players facing off against each other. I would certainly jump at the opportunity to be at a live game in the future. Jump at the opportunity. Boink. Um, it means uh, really be excited about having the opportunity and taking advantage of that opportunity. Okay. All right. And so got a couple more questions for you here. You can try these on your own. Have you ever won a race? Notice that it's present perfect. If you could make a competition, uh, what would it be? So these questions are a little bit more challenging. You can practice those on your own. I'm out of time for now, everyone, but uh, worry not. You can um, see many more videos with me teaching speaking and also doing speaking interviews. We have more than 50 HD uh, speaking interview mock exams uh, in our premium package at ahelp.com with lessons and explanations, um, also at gltshelp.com for general IELTS. So definitely visit our web pages. Check us out there. Um, like I said before, it, you click on the big red button. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access. It is a sales pitch, but at the same time, it's a win-win situation because you don't spend a lot of money and you get a lot of great uh, learning and you do improve your band scores. We are a British Council registration center. We're certified British Council agents, so uh, you're in good hands with us. Um, and um, that's it for me for today. Uh, don't forget to check out our Instagram, um, IELTS underscore AE help and GILTS help. And hopefully I will see all of you tomorrow. Uh, members, we have a members chat class tomorrow as well. So hopefully you come and join me for that. We'll have some reading tomorrow um, and uh, I believe listening um, practice. So uh, join me for that. All right, everyone, have a great rest of your day. Again, do remember, you're beautiful people. Keep up the good fight. Stay healthy, stay strong. I'm Adrian signing out from Victoria for now. Much love to all of you wherever you are. Bye.